Good evening and welcome to ATV News. My name is Shella Malosan. On tonight's bulletin, our reporter recounts his experience of the riot at Baba Field Soccer Stadium last week. Former tennis champ Wayne Black talks to us about his new role in the game. Rwandan refugees popularize an ancient dance. And a Chitungwiza artist is in the limelight after making a haulage truck out of wire. Last weekend, the police in Bulawayo battled with fans of the Highlanders soccer team following a row over a disputed goal. Our reporter Crispin Tavura, who witnessed the incident, gives us the following report. Babafield Stadium in Bulawayo was last week reduced to a battlefield after Highlanders soccer fans refused to accept the referee's decision to reverse an offside score. The Castle Laga Premier League match between Highlanders and Harare City Football Club came to a halt after hooligans started hurling stones and empty beer bottles into the pitch. The hooligans were rowdy and uncontrollable, creating chaotic scenes at the stadium. Highlanders players and the police were captured by ATV, removing stones and missiles that were thrown into the football pitch. The match eventually resumed and concluded with both teams scoring a goal each. The Highlanders coach disassociated himself from hooliganism displayed by his team supporters. It's unfortunate that uh, sometimes our supporters they tend to disturb our game, but <clears throat> it's football. It can only be hoped that the violence that characterized the Highlanders in Harare City match will not be repeated when the team clashes with the Harare Giants Dynamos. Reporting for ATV in Wulawayo, Zimbabwe. At the height of his career, Wayne Black won a Grand Slam title in 2005 at the Australian Open with compatriot Kevin Ulliet. Today the former champion, who retired seven years ago, is coaching tennis to kids. Robert Tafumane reports. Gone are the days when tennis-loving Zimbabweans used to throng the seat sports center in Harare to watch the Black family in action. All now is but history as the legendary black family tennis players have since retired from the game. One of the black brothers, Wayne, now spends most of his time teaching young stars tennis. You know, there's so many good players. Everybody plays, plays good tennis. There's, there's thousands and thousands of good tennis players. It's all, it's all a mental challenge. Once you get to that level, it's all a mental challenge to, um, to go f to, to the next. It's a mental jump rather than a almost a physical jump so you've got to uh, so if, if you can handle it mentally if you want it bad enough yeah they, they, they can they can do it when is also grooming his own children to play tennis and hopes that one day the black family will bounce back well hopefully um, yeah my two little ones will uh, will help I'll hopefully groom them <laughs> for sure but obviously I will spend so much more time with them than than any other than any other kids. Um, I'm coaching six or seven kids at the moment and, at a, uh, and also at a school, but obviously I only see them one or two hours a week, so it's very difficult to have a, a very big impact. Wayne, who during his heydays was ranked among the world's top six tennis players, recalled the good old days. The memories, yeah, just uh, I think back to the Davis Cups now and, and uh, the Grand Slam. The Grand, Grand Slam victories with with Cara and my, and my doubles partner Kevin Elliott. Um, you know those are the, the nice memories I have 
you know, that I still think about and still, uh, you know, have dreams about. Um, yeah, I mean, that was the best part, you know. I think the good thing with age, you forget about, you forget about the bad things. <laughs> Apart from offering a tennis classes, when is the passion for the environment and is now growing indigenous trees? When is married to Erina, another former tennis player from Kazakhstan, and the couple has two children, Joseph and Brooke. Wayne was coached by his father, Don, who passed away 12 years ago. Together with his brother, Byron, they were part of the Zimbabwe's Davis Cup team from 1992 until their retirement in 2005. I'm Robert Afumane, reporting for ATV in Harare, Zimbabwe. After winning battles in ancient Rwanda, warriors would perform the Kingore dance to celebrate their victory. Today, a group of Rwandan refugees residing in the Chipingi district is popularizing the dance as a way of maintaining cultural ties with their home country. Chairos Saonyama reports. A group of Rwandese refugees living in Tongogara camp in Chipingi have embarked on a mission to popularize their native dances. The group called Rwanda Power is showcasing its native dances called Dodozi and Kingore at the camp. What you saw, what you witnessed, there are two kinds of dance. There was a, girl, a dance performed by girls and uh, one by uh, youth, uh, male, male youth. The one from the girls is a very common traditional dance in Rwanda. And, uh, in, in every village, on every hill, you will see that kind of uh, traditional dance uh, whenever there is such an event calling for uh, a celebration. Leon Usengiman, who leads the group, said Kingore dance was mainly done by ancient warriors celebrating war victories. The warriors, one, once they were coming from fighting, were supposed to, say, to, to just give report. In that report, they were dancing, and they said, me, I have killed a certain number of wolves, of enemies, I have been, a uh, I have been between uh, enemies and my people, those who were wounded, and things like that. However, members of the group have only one year left to showcase their talents before they are repatriated to Rwanda. Since we, the community Rwanda, this is the last time that we perform. Because uh, of the secession closed by the United Nations, uh, we will be home next year uh, by this time. So we started recruiting also among uh, Congolese and uh, among uh, Bur Burundians. Uh, we are still looking for uh, Zimbabweans also to be part of the group, so that when we go, at least uh, the dance will not cease to exist. The Rwandese are among the 5,000 refugees living in Zimbabwe who fled their countries due to armed conflicts. Reporting for ATV in Chipinge, Zimbabwe. A Chitungwiza artist has taken his childhood car making skills to another level by building a haulage truck using 150 kilograms of wire. Jairo Saunyama gives us the story. A 33-year-old Chitungiza artist has become the talk of the town for his amazing two-and-a-half-meter wirework haulage truck. ATV recently visited Marco Chari at his home where he spoke about his wirecraft. serious. <laughs> Chare says he uses around 150 kgs of wire to make one wire haulage truck, which he sells for 4,000 US dollars. So far, I'm going to and I'm to to Chare does not keep the skills to himself and has since taught his friend how to make wire trucks. Chare 
Nekizmenu jimbo zimeze shikoma mavenye we exhibit. Oti shono ti shaka mina sinu mate tinda sweta etu no waiza tu gaza za cha amuna. Ine nasa amuna ndo zi gaza tu tu uno wezu zi. Ive na ifa gure ni taka inda tina kubupia tambu uno ma big products ya waka fana na tina wasaka tu tu no ti chance ya tina yo. Takutungwe ishandi sa tina so kreta so zi ilo zinyato mula dinto zinyato maketa mwishi. The two artists are hoping that one day they will invent their own haulage truck model. Patula unia tusu kachepo ndepe kuti Isusu pani magazira tukita atine Tuna kushika papo indi kuti Tuna kwansa kwa invent au Awa oni meki ya tuna kwansa wa gazira Futi nengi ya kafana ni mafreight line Awa oni shepi sati ambu Oni kwa wakana ni wanu Wanu gazira wa shuka na makamba nizwa Ndozo wa tuna kweza otiti Tese timbo sikofu papo indi yo Residents in Chitungiza held the artists for their creativity and wirecraft skills. Basari kutu kwa nawa kumana li basara kanaka. Yodishi ni chaka naka utu wa nawa kapula chiba tali basara wali mawoku wa hauzo pindu wa nimiezi kuti. Wainda kwa ntuku nuba kwa pindu wa nimiezi kuti itakonu chwa goma. Maliku bia umu wa wano. Ili basara kanaka utu kwa wana wani utengo shwa hu. Mali ya waya kanaka utu wa shansa shwa wanuda. So wana wa chidi kukula kudai. Reporting for ATV in Chitungiza, Zimbabwe. Thank you for joining us. Good night.